Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm just outside my door again in a forested area. And again, to show you that there's nature all around you, and you can find so much cool stuff right outside your door. Today's topic is what is the difference between millipedes and centipedes? And I've had a lot of viewers ask me that, so I'm going to put this story together. And the story is going to be based on a centipede species that I found here that's called a bark centipede, and its scientific name is Scoloptocrispus sexospinosus. And then we'll compare that centipede with two millipedes, the American giant centipede, whose scientific name is Narcissus americanus, and to the cherry millipede. And I think its scientific name is Halliforia polychrome. And it's called polychrome because it occurs in a lot of different colors. I found a very unusual one when I was in Tennessee that's literally pink, so we'll check those out. So today's episode is seven differences between centipedes and millipedes. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's to make this basic. It's like dog. Dog woods are flower. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So first, let's look at the different names. Centipede, millipede. Centi means a hundred. Milli means a thousand. So they're implying that centipedes may have a hundred legs and millipedes may have a thousand legs. Of course, neither which is true. Millipedes and centipedes have very much fewer legs than that. But in general, centipedes have less legs and millipedes have more legs. The number of legs will depend on both the age and the species of the particular millipede or centipede. In general, centipedes you'll find will have between 18 and 170 legs, while millipedes will have many more legs than that, again, depending on its species and its age. So both millipedes and centipedes add segments and in turn add legs as they get older. The second difference is that millipedes have two pairs of legs per segment, while centipedes only have one pair of legs per segment. As you can see in this millipede and this centipede, if you look really closely. The third difference is that millipedes have a more cylindrical, rounded body in cross-section, while centipedes have a much flatter body in cross-section. Difference number four. Centipedes are very fast. They're fast, they're agile, they don't sit still, they seem to be in constant motion, which kind of gives me even the heebie-jeebies. Like, I don't want to pick up a centipede. And also because centipedes are venomous and they can bite. The millipedes have a much slower movement, a much more patient kind of moving around, a much more deliberate kind of moving around. So to hold one of these guys, it's a whole different story. And it's kind of interesting to hold one of these centipedes, but I have to make you aware they do release some toxic substances, so you do need to be careful when you hold a centipede in your hand. But in general, they move much more slowly, much more deliberately than the centipedes, which are in constant motion, moving fast. In fact, centipedes have been clocked at moving 16 inches per segment. That's really fast. Fifth difference between centipedes and millipedes is that centipedes are predators. They'll eat almost anything they catch. Most of their diet is insects and other arthropods, though anything that they're bigger than they can catch and subdue with their rear claspers and their front pinchers that, that are modified as fangs that can deliver poison, they'll eat it. Millipedes are detritivores. They eat detritus. What is detritus? 
biology word for decaying leaves, decaying wood. Probably in association with the fungi that are decaying those and the fungi break down some of those materials that are hard to digest and make convert them into a form easily digestible. Difference number six. Centipedes have front legs that are modified as jaws. And they also have their rear legs that are modified that can also clasp and pinch as well. But their front jaws have venom glands associated with them and they can bite and deliver venom. For a human, that bite is very painful. For an arthropod or a prey item that the centipede is after, it will be fatal and the centipede can eat them. Millipedes do not have jaws that can bite people and they're not predators. They eat decaying material. And so you can pick up millipede without worrying about it biting you. In fact, will often curl up into a ball to protect itself because on its underside where the legs are attached, that is a little more delicate and sensitive. The outer side is like an armor. Its exoskeleton uh, protects it. So when it rolls up into a ball, it exposes only its hard outside exoskeleton. And the seventh difference between millipedes and centipedes is that millipedes are the masters of chemical warfare. They'll release all kinds of toxic things, especially hydrogen cyanide and benzyl aldehyde. So this cherry millipede, for example, if I pick him up in my hand and shake him like this and hold him in my hand and then smell my hand, it has a sweet almondy smell. What is that? Well, that's actually the smell of hydrogen cyanide and probably some benzyl aldehydes. And hydrogen cyanide is one of the most toxic substances known to man. So it's not in a concentration high enough to affect us humans, but unless you touch your eyes or your mouth, if you handle a millipede, you should always wash your hands immediately after and don't touch your eyes or your mouth before you do. So these cherry millipedes release this hydrogen cyanide gas as a defense. The bright colors of the cherry centipedes, which can vary from yellows to reds on blacks, are a warning coloration to warn other organisms that they're dangerous. I found this pink while I was camping and I was just amazed at this particular color pattern. The American giant millipede allows a substance to ooze out of glands along its sides. This substance does not contain hydrogen cyanide, so it's different from some of the other millipedes. It contains benzoquinones, which are also toxic. And you can see on my hand, after I picked him up, he left this orange color on there. Well, this orange color is this toxic material and can cause some level of dermatological burns. So again, I'll have to advise against handling them and maybe I should not have done so either. And I was also amazed that after I washed my hands, to wash off that orange dye on there, I found that there was a red discoloration there. And I'm not sure if the red was the effect of a dye or perhaps some dermatological burning there. It didn't hurt, but it definitely made me take a second look and be aware that if I pick these up again, to be very, very careful with them. And I'd probably advise not picking them up at all, but they're fascinating creatures. So. 35 years of teaching, I have to do a quick review. Number one, centi means 100, milli means 1,000. Millipedes usually have more legs than centipedes. Number two, centipedes have one pair of legs per segments. Millipedes have two legs per segment. Number three, centipedes have a flattened body plan, while millipedes have a more cylindrical body plan. Number four, centipedes are fast and agile, Millipedes are more slow and deliberate. Number five, centipedes are predators. Millipedes are detritivores, eat decaying stuff. Number six, centipedes have jaws and might bite you when you pick them up. 
while centipedes do not have jaws that can bite people and will roll up into a ball when disturbed. And difference number seven, centipedes, while they can bite, they don't release toxic substances. Millipedes are the masters of chemical warfare. Thank you for watching Nature at Your Door. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I had fun making it. Please subscribe to my channel if you like what I do and leave me comments or questions. I love hearing from my viewers. I love responding to comments and answering questions. If I don't answer your question right away, it might be because I'm out on the Appalachian Trail. I often go out for three or four days at a time and enjoy the forest and take photos and learn new things. But thanks for watching Nature at Your Door. We'll catch you next time.